Hello? Mr. President? How are you, Hubert? Well, I'm fine, and how are you? Oh, I'm just kind of broken up. I'm aching all over. I got a headache, and my damn bones, the hips hurt me, and I just, uh, I'm just worn out. I just called you because I hadn't bothered you, and uh, I didn't want to, and I didn't think it, I didn't think it's a good thing to do. But uh, I wanted to tell you first before I told anybody else that uh, you had no orders, and you had no instructions, and you had no mistakes, and. Uh, uh, I just don't know how anybody can do any better than that. Well, Mr. President, you're wonderful to me. We worked hard, and I enjoyed it very much. Well, you and your wife and your family are just perfect, and I was, I was awfully convinced about the night I went up to Atlantic City, but I'm a lot more convinced tonight. And uh, uh, Everybody makes some mistakes, and they've got to write them out. And, you got to suffer with them and understand them that uh, uh, you and Muriel didn't make, didn't slip a bobble in your family, and I just wanted all of you to well, take whatever little comfort that you knew that uh, Lady Bird and I loved you. Well, we love you, Mr. President, and Lady Bird, and we've been thinking about you. I haven't wanted to bother you either. I knew you were on the move every day, but we've been keeping in touch with your boys. Well, that's the way to, that's, we have handled it. You handled it just perfect, and I couldn't improve on it, and I just give you an A-double plus, and you probably never get that good at grade again. <laughs> I don't, We're going to have a big victory tonight, Mr. President. I don't pass many of them out, uh, but uh, I feel that way about it. I hope so. I don't know. I'm sitting near the home of Thornberry, and they're rubbing me. i got a bad hip. I gotta, I've got been standing on my right leg. Your hip ever hurt you? Yes, sir, Ree, and I'll tell you, you know that I uh, had a period in this campaign where I thought my hips and legs were going to kill me. Well, you just did the perfect. You wound up happier. I told the press this morning you were happier when you started and ending you were, and you started and you were more effective. And oh, that television, uh, those television, I saw them. I didn't see them on TV, but I saw them on a practice thing ahead of time, and it was just perfect. Oh, you were so restrained and so effective, and you looked, God, God, just as fresh as a daisy. You must well, have done I them. I felt good. I felt good. And I think we got some good licks in off the West Coast, Mr. President. Well, a day or so. I know. You yeah, seem like you had wonderful crowds. Yes, sir. We surely did. And I stopped by Salt Lake City on the way home just to get in another punch or two on some uh, statewide TV. And I, I was very careful and uh, very, uh, very restrained. I didn't go on any attack. I just talked about the, the issue of public morality in terms of public service. Oh, Hubert, I wish you'd see what these sons of bitches have done. They bought four full-page ads in most papers. Some of them just got 12 pages, some 16. Four full pages in this state, and it's all integrity and morality and Baker and Jenkins and Billy Saul Estes. And, uh, I know. They yeah. had five full pages in the Los Angeles Times on Sunday. Five full pages. And they've got out an instruction from the, the Negro Protective League that says that any Negro goes votes that the Protective League just wants to inform him as their friend that if he's ever had a traffic ticket, if he's ever been under suspicion, if he's ever been speeding, if he's ever had an over-parking ticket, if he ever hadn't paid his taxes on time, if he's ever been discharged from employment, that uh, he'll have to report right away to the sheriff and that uh, these things will have to be settled before he can clear his record to vote. And they put those out in all southern cities, just the meanest, dirtiest, low-down stuff that I ever heard. I ought to go to jail for it. It's just, it's just inhuman. Well, they've been doing it. I tell you, they were doing it out in the Mexican areas, the same thing in California. And uh, I made uh, several talks and uh, uh, appearances on the Los Angeles stations. And I got some good cooperation from the news commentators, letting them know that these people know that uh, no one had a right to interfere with their right to vote, and that the Justice Department was standing by to make sure that the citizens' rights were being upheld. And we called Nick Katzen back, and as you know, he issued some statement to the effect that uh, Justice Department was standing by to make sure that uh, there was no uh, interference with the citizens' right to vote. 
We got to set us up. The first thing you had to start looking about is how you're going to have a relationship with the Senate. Now, there's not going to be any jealousy between me and you. You know that. But uh, I want you to try to figure out what the problems we got how we can get a committee chairman that them got but three or four there that's worth a good goddamn. And we I want to investigate these election things, and we want to have committees we can refer things to that, uh, that, uh, that we can do something about. So we just ought to be thinking about who has the ability and who has the guts. That's right. If Howard Cannon's elected, he's one. Yes, sir. He's, uh, he's a good one. Uh, we've got a fellow, I tell you, one boy that's got guts. If you'll get in there and take is Johnny Pastore. Well, he won't do it. He wants to, he's got that Catholic wife, and he's got to get home every Thursday. Yeah, that's right. That's what you're so right about that. Well, I'll look them over very carefully. There, we are, We're a little short on those kind of people. We've got to find them, and I'll see you now. We're going to have all of the 300 press down here. I'm coming down tomorrow. And you get here in time for that barbecue. It's going to be out here at noon, and the uh, helicopter... About 1230. You let them know what time you're arriving and where, and a helicopter will bring you out to Austin, and then you just stay as long as you feel like it, and bring whoever you want to. And thank your, uh, thank your sweet wife and all your children. Well, I will, Mr. President. And listen, be of good cheer. We're yeah. going to give them the damnedest licking they ever had in their lives. I don't know about that, but yes, I hope. Sir. I hope that's right. And How many states we're going to carry? Uh, I think you're going to carry about 40, 46. Okay. That we will. All right. Okay. And uh, when, uh, I, by the way, I just want to let you know that after the uh, the latter part of the week, I hope to take off a few days and uh, get me some sunshine. You ought to. Island. You ought to. Now, what about the, you got to, you just got to. We're in trouble in Vietnam, serious trouble. I told them to keep you informed. Yes, sir. Uh, we're going to have to hit back there. Yeah. Uh, the, um, uh, are you going to carry Minnesota? Oh, oh, boy. I don't want to sound too too uh, optimistic, but we'll carry Minnesota by 250,000 votes or more. Out of how many? Out of a million three. That'll be the biggest one ever? Yep. We're going to get the biggest vote ever out of Minnesota. Well, now, you encourage that tonight in all these states as a mandate, because they're going to say, well, that's done mean anything, and oh, so on and so forth. start that right away, Mr. President. They're going to do two things. They're, they're boys that even some of them that endorsed you are going to say, some of these papers say, well, this wasn't a mandate, this is just an anti-Goldwater. That's right. Now, the next thing they're going to say is, well, watch out for Humphrey. He's not going to be loyal. I read one of those. Well, you just tell them that, uh, you just tell them that you've never seen such a campaigner that people love, like Johnson. I right? God, you got to wear so contagious, you loved him yourself. Well, and I want to tell you, Mr. President, when the day comes that I can't be loyal to you, why, you just fire me. I know that. You I know. No, no, no. no. Charges. Papers, no papers ever going to come between us. Nobody else. Sure. You just tell me what you want me to do. Oh, goodbye. God bless you. Tell me, Earl. I said, I okay. called her. Tell me, Earl. I called her. Okay, I will. We went in, uh, me and my family went in 49 states, and Nero took the 50th on the last one. <laughs> All right. So, uh, goodbye. I'll tell her. God bless you. Waiting.